All right, guys, so a lot of you have problems adjusting from PFTrack 2014 to PFTrack 17, which you downloaded, and I asked you to download because this is the latest version. It is true that the class was written with PFTrack 2014, and some of you got a little bit confused between the two user interfaces of both software. So I'm going to demonstrate the uh, green, um, <coughs> sorry, the, the blue screen um shot that you downloaded for the assignment in order to show you how to navigate around 2017. so the first thing of course is the need to create a project so i'm going to click on create and i'm going to leave it on my desktop here and the project is going to be called blue for blue screen and i'm going to click on confirm once i do that you'll notice that the create panel that I had in the classes video for 2014 now looks similar to what you see here. So what we have here is actually tabs and categories. We have a category for tracking, solving, distortion, geometry, photogrammetry, z-depth, spherical tracking, stereoscopic work, exporting, I am using the full version of PFTrack, utilities, Python and custom nodes. You also notice that you have tree presets, which means you can save tree presets from your pipeline and then bring it back into different pages of the um, uh, tree view that you have here. But first things first, let's uh, go ahead and bring in the footage. So I'm going to my desktop where the blue screen footage is. I'm going to take it. I can drag it into the default media bin if needed, but I can also go ahead and put it straight into the tree view here. So there it is. I'm going to cache it. And I don't know any camera presets for this shot. All I know it was shot on film many years ago in the Academy Blue Screen Studio, which is now the Green Screen Studio. And then it was uh, sized down for the uh, purpose of the class. So the first thing I'm going to do is once I cache the footage is to start tracking. So I'm going back to the create and I'm going to the tracking and I can choose the user track. Now I noticed that uh, most of you what you did is you based your trackers on the left wall and the right wall right in comparison to the actor but you didn't treat the top. Now when it comes to uh, 2D tracking you want to define or I should say you want the trackers to define the 3D space that you see um, in the film. So I'm going to track this by clicking on the create button and I'm going to put my first tracker over here. Now it's not exactly accurate but I can zoom in by middle mouse button click and drag the mouse or I can just use the window here as you can see this is my magnifying glass to fine-tune the position of the tracker. I can also uh, change a bit the pattern area and the search area. I don't need to explain what these do. You should know by now. And the failure threshold will determine the tracker sensitivity to uh, that specific error, which means every time you create a tracker, you're going to have a failure threshold that is specific to that tracker. As in Match Mover, when I told you you can lower down the sensitivity of the trackers, in the uh, preferences of the software, that was for all trackers that you create. But here, you can determine each tracker individually what's going to be the, its sensitivity. So the failure threshold of, of 0 0.7 is fine. Usually what I like to do, uh, especially when I have shots that are a bit blurry or noisy, I just like to put it on 0.5 or 0.4. Uh, the deformation is going to stay either on rotate and skew because the camera is moving around, but um, I'm just going to give it on none. And now I can start uh, tracking by uh, clicking on this button or this button depends on my position on the timeline. And right now I am on the first frame. So I'm going to click on the forward. And as you can see, the tracker is sticking to that pretty good. What I want you to notice in, on those trackers is the score. As you can see here, the score. The score itself will determine how strong the tracker is, which means the score always starts at 1, but since I determined that the failure threshold is going to be 0.5, if the score drops to 0.5 or less than that, that means that the tracker is uh, weak and it cannot follow that pattern of pixels. So I'm going to um, track this and 
um, I'm going to be uh, using the trackers where I think the trackers should be and then I'll show you the rest of the process. Okay, so I have about 10 trackers, which is more than enough to solve this, but I still want to show you the last tracker I'm going to put here. I, uh, please note that um, I also put a tracker on the uh, rim light here, and since it is a solid, non-moving object, then I felt comfortable enough to track one of the corners of the barn doors on the light. So the, the last tracker I'm going to put, I'm going to put it here on this box. Now, why am I going to put another one here because the more trackers that you have uh, in the shot uh, which define the left right on on three planes middle ground background and foreground the better your result would be but this tracker here is going to be a little bit special because as you can see this feature doesn't stay all the way throughout the sequence so what I'm going to do is I'm going to frame one I'm going to click on create and I'm going to put my tracker over here I'm going to lower the failure threshold to 0.5. I can even change a bit the search area and the pattern area, of course. Let's just move it a little bit over here. And now I can track it. You'll notice that as soon as this pattern gets closer to the physical edge of the frame, it's going to stop. And this is what I want to show you. So I'm going to click on track forward and it stops. Now notice what happens. The, the tracker loses its pattern and it goes crazy so I need to fix it. I cannot leave it like that because otherwise it will reflect in the camera's animation. So I'm going to take it back and see where exactly it's losing that pattern which is about he here. So I'm not going to deal with this right here on the same frame where it loses. I'm just going to take it a couple of frames back and in here what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the properties of the user track, making sure that track 11 is highlighted, and I'm going to click on the R+. Now, what the R+, will do, it's going to remove all the keyframes that I have as of this frame, frame 93, forward. If I would push R-, minus, it will remove all the frames from 93 back. So I'm going to click on R+, and now you'll notice that it leaves this kind of a brown track here which tells PF track that this track exists despite the fact that we took out all the keyframes out of it so before I solve this I need to get rid of this brown area and that would be by the H plus the H plus will hide whatever is uh, left from the tracker if you will from that point forward so if I click on H plus then now this area is empty why is it good for it's good for to tell PF track that track 11 exists from frame 1 all the way to frame 93 no more than that because if you don't do that then you might cause some issues later on down the road so now after the user track is done and I have about 11 trackers that cover the left side right side middle ground foreground and background I can go ahead into the camera solver I can right click go to solving and choose the camera solver or I can go into the create button go to the solving tab click the camera solver, drag, and it should connect itself onto the user track. In here, I don't have to do much, just choose the translation to medium smooth and rotation to medium smooth, which will tell PF track when you solve the camera, try to get as smooth as possible animation on the translation and rotation. And I'm going to click on solve all. So as you can see, all my solve is green and if I go to the error tab my arrows are extremely low if I click on fit view they don't cross the 0.6 which means my solve is strong you can also click on the tracker tab and see that the residual numbers do not exceed one which is one of the most important indications for the um, for the camera solve you can also click on the curve editor right under the tree view window right here and you can see how the translation behaves how the rotation behaves and if there were changes in the focal length then we would see a white graph for the focal length clicking back on the same button to the tree view now we can go ahead and right click on the camera solve go to utilities select the orient scene and in here, I'm going to take the marquee tool, 
select this tracker and set to origin and I can now switch to the rotation in order to try to match my um, rotation of the scene around the grid and another easier way would probably be to basically take the edit mode change it to axes and let's just turn off the grid right now by clicking on the display turning off Y and Z and now I can pretty much determine where the X would be with these lines that I click left mouse button and drag and I'm gonna turn off the X axis turn on the um, Y axis take this line right here on the box one point second point take this one point second point on this middle ground pole and then the uh, marquee has changed because I moved around so I'm gonna click on set origin again because track 7 is still highlighted set origin and now I can take a look at my shot within the 3d space notice how the point cloud does resemble let me just bring back the ground the point cloud does resemble the 3d space that we see through oh I shouldn't say 3d space but actually the set that we see through the um, f on the on the footage basically so there it is and now all I have to do now is right click go to export and export now of course I can export because this is the full version of PF track and I did provide you the Maya file for those students that use the PLE version so there it is that's a quick quick crash course on the user interface of PFTrack 2017